putting on this makeup. I was doing that in real life in front of an actual movie crew. And so it was a little embarrassing, but it's necessary. It's uncomfortable. But as artists, we have a responsibility to show the beauty in things, but also show the ugly side of things as well. Hi, how are you? I'm doing fine in you. Fantastic. Happy to yes. be here. Yes, thank you so much for your time. A pleasure to talk to you and a pleasure to talk about Sidney Palmer. For me, one of the like one of the best characters on this movie. Thank you. Yes. So when you first read the script, what was your reaction? I, it was shocking, of course. It's definitely jarring when you read it just because of the, of the sheer scale of it. I think the first draft that I read was close to 200 pages. And, uh, and it's it's one of those moments where you have to read the script, put it down, and then revisit it again because you want to. You're interested at how the director is going to pull something like this off. But if anybody could do it, of course, it would be Damien Chazelle because you know his mind is is, <laughs> is outlandish and and he's fearless in his filmmaking. So so I knew as soon as I finished reading it, I had to be a part of it. Especially as the cast was really forming and coming together, I was like, this is a moment and an opportunity that I didn't want to um, I didn't want to let slip away. Yes, and you also have to learn to play the trumpet. How was was that very difficult for you? Was a challenge? It's it's a challenge above all other challenges, especially as an actor, because I'm not a, I'm not a musician or I don't consider myself one. Uh, I'm an actor, so I had to really kind of set my regimen every day as a musician, which is just practice, 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 practice. I don't read sheet music, so I was really fortunate that Damien and Justin um, and my coach Dan Fernero were really patient in developing. A system for me to be able to learn the uh, the notes and learn the different um, you know uh, minute details of the of the music that Justin was making because in these type of films and like Damien's Whiplash when it's about a musician musicians watching can tell if you can't really play it or if you're playing it wrongly or or, or just you know it's not accurate so I was really really aggressive about making sure I learned it fully and I was able to to be believable on, on screen. Oh yes, yeah, you were. That's for sure. The first scene you're very like believable. There is a lot of like scenes that you that you 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 character progress. Like there is the party scene, the beginning, there is the other party thing that he's attend when Sydney start getting into into Hollywood. Right. And then there is that black face when they give you to the Right. Charcoal to to do. How was it for you to 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 play that scene? Um, it's challenging. It's a different type of challenge. You know, I was you know it, it was less about the trumpet playing and more about the uh, kind of the crossroads that he had reached uh, with his I would consider uh, an ally and friend in, in Manny uh, Diego's character. And it's it was really important for me to really take my time with it because it is this type of thing actually happened in that era. And I think Sydney was sort of a bystander of fame. I don't think he was setting out to be famous. It was kind of just like music was his focus. He was a part of this shift in a, in the film industry era, going into sound. And it just turned out that he found an opportunity to change his lifestyle and become famous. And I think he was enjoying it. And then like fame for a lot of people, it, you, you can pay a certain price to get it. And sometimes you get pushed to your threshold and and sometimes you, you, you learn that it's not, it's not for everyone. So I think Sydney had really reached that point of not wanting to lose himself and lose his soul for the paycheck. And uh, with that, um, I think it was that one scene where he really kind of shamed himself. Um, and it was it was odd uh, actually filming it, the amount of shame that I actually felt playing sitting because it was a bit meta as I'm playing somebody who's on a movie set putting on this makeup. I was doing that in real life in front of a actual movie crew. And so it was a little embarrassing, but it's necessary. It's uncomfortable. But as artists, we have a responsibility to show the beauty in things, but also show the ugly side of things as well. Yeah, yeah. That was like a, a genuine performance for you. I think it was what like was amazing. And do you think that, that Hollywood changed from what you see that and change right now for you? I think Hollywood is, is always changing, is ever changing, is ever evolving. Um, I, I don't think that the industry is without its flaws. But uh, but as far as in comparison to that era, I think we, we've changed a lot. I think there are way more conversations about what could be improved in the industry as far as protecting the artists and as far as um, um, include being more inclusive of different uh, cultures and different uh, uh, views. So I think yeah, I think it's it's changed. We still have a ways to go, but I think we're we're doing our best. That's amazing. Jovan, this is the time that I have with you. I wish you a lot of success. 
And thank you so much for this performance because I really enjoy it. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. If you like this video, don't forget to comment, to like, and subscribe to our channel right here.